I'm here at Rory Cowan's studio here for Mrs. Brown's and we're here to talk about uh, the Beatles in mono today. So Rory, why did you go ahead and buy all of these vinyls here when you had them in CD and spent so much money on, on, on a box set? Uh, it's not something I've done yet. Well, these are mono and when I got into the Beatles, the 60s passed me by. Um, it was in the 70s when I got into the Beatles and so I only ever heard all their stuff in stereo. And um, some of the earlier albums like Please Please Me and with the Beatles and stuff like that, they sound dated because you'd have a guitar coming out of one speaker and a drum coming out of the other speaker and voices coming out of different speakers. It just didn't sound right, it sounded dated. So when the Beatles mono box set came out, I read about it and I loved the Beatles. And it was supposed to be brilliant. So I said I'm going to buy it. Um, even though I have them on vinyl, I have them on CD, I have I downloaded them all, whatever. Listening to, the, listening to the stereo ones in the car just sounds dreadful because you're driving along and you hear stuff coming out of that speaker over there. And it, it, it just never sounded right. I got the mono box set. I'm hearing the Beatles albums like for the first time. I'm hearing stuff in them that I have never heard before. And um, they're just amazing. And the, the way the Beatles made them, they, they mixed them for mono. When they recorded them, mono was all that was available. And that's what they did. And it sounds Perfect. It sounds absolutely brilliant. And were they originally intended to be? Were the Beatles originally intending to record in mono? Are they as they originally were, or did did stereo come in in a big way in the early seventies or when? Stereo came towards the end. Like the most of the Beatles stuff was recorded and mixed in mono because that's all there was. Oh. And um, then other engineers and stuff got involved, and it just they made them sound. Well, we have to keep up with technology, but they ruined an awful lot of what was there. Mm. So, as I say, when I listened to like Please Please Me, when I heard that album first in the 70s, I thought that sounds dated. I put it down, didn't listen again. I've listened to it when I got this. It's a stunning album from 1963. It's a brilliant, brilliant album. And the way the Beatles progressed from 1962 to 1966 even, four years, three years, just over three years, no other band ever progressed that much. They couldn't. The Beatles were unbelievable. And then when they stopped touring, they were able to do, devote more time in the studio. And that's when you really see what they were capable of doing. And they just went into experimentation and they did some brilliant stuff. It was just absolutely amazing. So you have Revolver here out, uh, your, your isolated Revolver. Tell me a bit about this, that, the significance of Revolver next to Sergeant Pepper's, uh, which you have here. Um, which one is this? Please, 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 me. please me. Yeah, there's, I've, they're, they're all in there. Revolver is this song in particular. Tomorrow never knows. The one you're hearing in the background now. That is a stunning song. For a start, the drums are the main instrument there. Ringo Starr is just playing out the skin on this. He's absolutely brilliant. Everything else is in the background. The drums are the main instrument. John Lennon's voice sounds like it's way off in the distance or something like that. And this is what they were able to, when you look at this album 50 years ago, and this is the sound Tomorrow Never Knows, they were absolutely brilliant at writing songs to finish an album. Like with Sgt. Pepper, it was a day in the life, Revolver, Tomorrow Never, Tomorrow Never Knows. They are amazing. And to think that that's 50 years old, I mean... And how were the concepts trying to link with each other? What was, would you consider the Revolver to be a concept album? No, what Revolver was, was they went, they had more time in the studio, they stopped recording, uh, they stopped touring, I should say. So they went into the studio, they had a lot of time to spend in the studio, and they just wanted new sounds, new everything, backward tapes, the whole, they wanted everything new. Everything had to be different. And they had the time to do it. And that, Sergeant Pepper, they honed it, they got brilliant at it, they knew what they were doing. Revolver was when they started to experiment, and that's for me why this is my favorite Beatles album. And when you listen again, to go back to the drumming on this, people will tell you, or they'll ask, you'll hear in conversations, is Ringo Starr the good drummer, or was Ringo Starr the best drummer in the world, and blah, blah, blah. You listen to Tomorrow Never Knows, and you see how brilliant Ringo Starr is. Mm -hmm. I mean, if anyone ever doubts how good a drummer Ringo was, listen to this album. He is amazing. Well, he, he came in at the end of the, uh, when they were choosing the people, it's, didn't it didn't start off with John and Paul. John, yeah. Paul, George, and... Uh, and, and then they, they chose... Pete Best, and then... Ringo, but Ringo suited the Beatles, I think. Mm. Um, I couldn't imagine the Beatles without Ringo anyway. But on this, when he was allowed, up to this, they were recording as quick as they could, and Ringo was great, but he was just like solid, whatever. But when they were starting to experiment, 
he was able to take time and develop what he was doing. He's absolutely brilliant. And the songs on this, I mean, when you look, Eleanor Rigby, and then there's also here, that my favourite love, one of my favourite love songs of all time, Here, There and Everywhere. Mm. There are two songs that are Paul McCartney songs. They're gems, and they're, and they're on an album that's 50 years old. Paul McCartney yeah. was in his early 20s when he wrote those songs. Mm. It's just stunning stuff. When I bought Revolver, they had an influence on me as, as well. Um, I wouldn't be as, uh, have as many albums as yourself, but I was just playing Eleanor Rigby and I'm only sleeping on the violin. It had a huge impact on me too. This yeah. is the most amazing. I think this is the best album ever ever recorded. I my favorite album of all time is Revolver. I love it. It's brilliant. Do, is it? Do you think it's somehow uh, more poignant or less arty than um, Sergeant Pepper's? Sergeant Pepper, they got it right. That's what I was saying earlier on. They knew what they were. They knew how to do it. This is the one where they were learning how to do it, how learn, experiment. They were learning what was there. They experimental. Were, yeah, they were learning what yeah. they could do in the studio. And that makes it so much, that makes it so brilliant. And listen, I've got something to show you here. Oh. This is a photo. When I was in EMI, I met Paul McCartney. Oh, you met Paul yes. McCartney. Yeah. <laughs> when I was in EMI, I thought that was the highlight of I just, mm. oh, I've never forgotten that. That's, that's nearly 30 years ago. Well, he's looking directly in your there. eyes there, and you're, you're giving him a, 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 there, a come to know, bed look and there. Yeah. And um, Linda's nose is down there. I'm just, I was raging. The photographer never got Linda in. Because when I met her, she was absolutely gorgeous. She was lovely. She was well, guys, festival. look at that. He's met Paul. And, um, you know. The Beatles. Get the Beatles on Mono. It's a brilliant collection. I tell you, you couldn't spend more. You, best value for money. Buy the Beatles box set in Mono. They are brilliant. Bye-bye. <laughs>